It's Friday Feedback Friday, the feedback day of the week. Ha, it's Feedback Friday, and I've had to pre-record Feedback Friday this week. Uh, so I'm going to do some sort of general things because there aren't, there hasn't been the same amount of time for comments to generate. As I normally have, it has been a week. Um, first of all, thanks everybody for the condolences um, on you know the passing of my father-in-law. Um, it's I'm exhausted. I feel really raw. Um, that being said, it's been good to have this work to do. Um, you know, I saw clients this week and stuff like that because the routine was actually helpful. It was an excuse to not participate in the ongoing drama that's been going on. But yeah, I'm real happy it's the weekend. Uh, but there's lots of cool stuff to get to, including, yes, my thoughts on the GTA 6 trailer. Uh, I'm going to talk about that after I do the help support this channel. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Very, very important. And then the GoFundMe for our men's groups for our Discord. Again, I'll be revamping that soon. The minute I get a chance, there is a work backlog right now. Um, but uh, so... Right off the bat, um, GTA 6, what did I think? A lot of people asked. And I uh, I thought it was great. You know, as somebody who, you know, my favorite era, and I know this is really basic, but, you know, my favorite era is sort of the San Andreas era of Grand Theft Auto. Uh, I thought this looked great. Um my biggest issue with GTA 4 and GTA 5, and this is much more an issue with GTA 5 than GTA 4, was a main character who is just, I mean, Michael's an asshole. You know, Michael's an asshole. Franklin's a complete schmuck. And um, uh, uh, Trevor's Trevor. <laughs> you know, um, Nico, I think that was his name was was better um y you sympathize with him a lot more uh i'm not saying this a mistake just personally the the self-loathing just got to me it stopped being fun but the new main character i don't know if they said her name um but the uh she seems like you know there's promise there uh, it seems like it can be fun, uh, and crazy and definitely looks like a Florida, like Miami vibe, which yes, super fun. Enjoyed the fluffy girls on the beach. Enjoyed all the twerking. It seemed celebratory. And yes, I know Grand Theft Auto likes to say things and sometimes it works better than others. Uh, I, it's a very brief preview. I'm reading a lot in, but my comment previously was the only thing that will make me interested in playing another Grand Theft Auto game campaign is if you get to play as one of the hookers. So <laughs> but maybe, I don't know. She's in jail. We don't know for what, uh, but, uh, yeah, it looks, it looks promising. It looks like it's still going to be edgy. It's still going to be risky. Uh, it's still going to be very sandboxy. Uh, and the clash of cultures that you get in Florida, that part of Florida is a really good setting for a Grand Theft Auto game. So yay. Uh, okay. So getting on again, um, the comments this week, um, a lot of them sort of revolved around the, the challenge of summarizing situations, like types of situations, where each situation is a very, very specific thing. Uh, on Monday, I'm going to be covering, you know, I'm going to do a little cautionary video for men because the Jonathan Majors trial has started. And I, I do think that people read their own situations into the outcome of these things. And especially because this trial is not televised and 
we can't judge for ourselves are only going based on snippets. Um, every situation is different just because something happened in, in, in one place doesn't, you know, what happened to you was real. Your feelings are valid. And that it's, it, it's, it's really, really tough to, um, talk about these things without accidentally wounding some people. And some people in the comments this week were very good about saying, I waited and I appreciate you saying, you know, especially on Monday's video, appreciate you saying it's not my fault. You know, thank you for saying that because they did feel, you know, they did brace before I said that. So yay, that makes me happy. Uh, cause that was of course the video about not making your partner, your stability. And, uh, uh, a, a, pre a, a commenter said, I was support, support, blah, 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 blah. I was the support person in my previous marriage. It was dicey, difficult. And ultimately I wound up being the bad guy, then got stalked. I've referred to my current wife as my binary star. We orbit around a common center, but we maintain ourselves. That difference is life changing. That's a great way of putting it that, you know, it shouldn't be one person as a stable center and the other person going around. It's you're both going around. It's a relationship. It's a dance. It's a give and take. And you know, that, that is very important. Um, there's, uh, someone else said, um, my significant other often calls me his rock, but in reality, it's pretty mutual. I have a really hard time at the beginning of the pandemic because I had to leave our home to go to work and he was working from home. He had more spoons to give than I did and he helped me through that. There are other times I've had more spoons and have helped him. I think he's more inclined to call me as rock because he wasn't expecting that level of even appropriate support in a relationship. So I think he perceives me as doing more than I am. I wonder how common that is among men. I... I do think that a, a lot of this language, yes, it does come from people coming from abusive circumstances and trying to figure out what's normal. And that's what makes these things so challenging is from one person, it's just a simple statement. From another, it's a pattern of abuse. And in, in this case, you know, as long as, as this person feels like there is a give and take, which, which in this case she does, uh, that's great. Um, you know, there's a lot of really schmaltzy self help language surrounding this, but th that's what it comes down to. If you feel like you're not only supporting, but are supported, that's good. If you don't, it's time to, you know, figure out the reasons for that. And, um, uh, moving on to, is it still Monday? Yeah, it's still Monday. Okay, great. Uh, it's important to understand a lot of media is designed for entertainment, not therapy or a how to adult. A lot of people are trying to get therapy or life advice from the wrong places. The problem with Spider-Man is that there are fans with different preferences. Some prefer Peter and MJ, some prefer Peter and Black Cat. I think a lot of fans are also attached to struggling single Peter like people attached to dark gritty Batman. Um, and then um, they gave sort of recommendations. Basically, there are different iterations of these characters, so you don't have to attach to any particular one. Um, and yeah, that's true. And and this is one of the things I said, like, oh my God, you know, making these, these, these videos about topics is so challenging precisely because there have been great Spidey Black Cat stories. There have. And no, not like the, the commenter nailed it with media is designed for entertainment, not therapy or a how to adult. My question is, why is this dysfunctional adult toxic relationship um, type of entertainment seem to be the norm? But I'm going to save comments on that because Song and I are do a two, doing a two women talking on toxic relationships. So stay tuned. Um, I agree that Alan Wake 2 has 
probably has some of the most emotionally mature story, uh, writing I've seen this year in a game. Something I found interesting was at the start when Saga finds the page, she's very gung-ho about wanting to know what happens next. That reminded me of Jesse from Control. She was suddenly happy to be the director and no matter what she thought to herself, she couldn't help but push the story forward. It was like Alan was dragging these women into his darkness with him, and I felt like that before in my own life, and it's really draining. I don't know if that's something that Remedy intended to say, but that's what I've been getting out of their Remedy verse games. And there is certainly an element of Alan that is very, I am the center of my universe. And the the cool thing is, is that we can we can play and decide, is that guilt? Is it narcissism? Is it a bit of both? And the game really complicates that with Alan Wake 2 as you go further. Um, it's a great game. I will have more Alan Wake 2 content coming because there is so much there. It is very, very good from a writing perspective. I've got a lot of deep dive game videos planned. I just don't want to dash them off because I know people are going to scream at me no matter how watertight my arguments are. So I just want to make sure I can justify the level of specificity to myself. Um, and that moves on to something that I forgot to announce earlier, and I want to announce it in the video before it goes much further. Next week, at some point, don't know exactly when, because it all depends on how quickly I can get it done, the uh, Discord server that I run did our own game awards. We voted and everything. So we're calling it year of the game, not game of the year. And the presentation of those awards is happening next week. Uh, hopefully I'll keep you posted, but, um, it was, you know, totally, this is just what we like and want to highlight and spent more time seeming like, like using games as reflections of trends in games. And yet at the end of it, people took it very, very seriously. And there was a lot of really cool debate and it was neat. It's cool when things like that just happen and end up being fun. And there were many, many laughs. And when you see the categories, you, you will understand why. Cause it is, it is not at all serious and yet kind of the things people actually care about in games, which um, it'll be fun. So moving on to Wednesday, um, this, this one commenter, I don't know, somebody, uh, commented on multiple videos talking about having BPD, borderline personality disorder. And, um, I don't know if it was the same person. I just, um, they, they talked about, I understand the point of have the little fight now. So you don't have the big fight later, but some people think that means if their partner is already in threat response, you push through and still try to have it now. I know it's an edge of the issue, not the main one, but it has been the main through line of the abuse I have been subjected to. And it's made it harder to deal with my issues, BPD and major depressive. If your partner cannot be calm about the issue, pull back and let tempers calm. Because for some people, anger doesn't make them more honest. It makes them seek an end to the fight and therefore say things they won't mean because it will shut you up. And that's, I mean, there's a lot there. It's all, it's all true. You know, remember what I said about how something can be totally normal and healthy in one instance and a, and a part of an abuse pattern in another. That was the kind of thing I was talking about. Um, yeah, that when to have the fight. There is some science to it. There is more art than science. And, um, you know, I actually, I, I'm working with this one client who had a relationship with a really great person not work out because their conflict styles were not compatible, you know? Um, and there was nothing wrong per se with either conflict style. It It's just, in my opinion, my client's conflict style was not respected and actively invalidated. And if you're, it, it's, the most important thing is that you know yourself and you know when you're, when and where you're at your best and when and where you're at your worst. And conflict is best when 
Conflict goes best when you can be at your best. And if you're somebody who does say mean things to hurt someone just to shut them up, yeah, making sure you are um, uh, calmer. Now, calm is one of those relative things. But if you if you need to cool down a bit because you know you do tend to go off that way, that is your responsibility to take that. That's 100% true. There are other circumstances where if it's about who said what and those little tangible details matter, it's better to talk about it as fast as possible because the number of times, and, and this is, again, this is a particular sensitivity of mine, I know it, but the number of times that people didn't say something at the time and then hit me with it months or even years later and it's something they claim I said, but it's not the way I talk. And I can kind of sort of remember something that used similar words, but was the way I talk and what I remember happening, but it's not what they remember. And can I be 100% sure? No, but neither person can three months later. So if that kind of stuff's important, you have to have the, the difficult conversation about it as soon as possible. Because you can't just expect another person to roll over and say things happen 100% the way you remember it and 0% the way they remember it. And, you know, the, the fact that this person brought up that they have BPD is really relevant because the big challenge in, in people, around people with borderline is... That, that validation tightrope. And I may have to do an entire video, not just for people with v BPD. Um, everybody is taught to be bad at this. Um, the idea that, you know, I'm talking about my feelings and you're supposed to talk about my feelings. So I feel that you weren't there for me. That's my feelings. You have to validate my feelings. No, you don't validate the invalid. If you don't agree that you weren't there for the person, you could say, I feel, I, I, I understand that you felt lonely, you know, that you felt alone, that you can, but you can't, you weren't there for me. What? What do you mean? It, it's tough. It's very tough. And that's why there has to be a give and take. And if somebody is just digging in and not, not letting any of the other side in, any of the other perceptions in, that's always going to damage relationships. Uh, and this is sort of where we're going to land the plane. Another commenter said, you can only do the best you can under these circumstances. I've recently been through something similar with the death of my son. My daughter-in-law, her family and friends aligned themselves against me, his sons and sisters. It devolved into a literal screaming match at the cemetery while making arrangements. I honestly don't regret it at all because it was the only chance any of us had to defend ourselves or speak our minds. And this is one of these things where a bunch of people are going to rush to judge this comment or no, you shouldn't have screamed, da da da. I'm go good for you, commenter. Good for you. The fact that you're saying that you don't regret it, it was the only chance any of us to defend ourselves or speak our minds. If you can live with it, if you feel that it was right and authentic, good for you. Because people are going to judge your reactions when people are screwing with you and people are playing games. And they're well-meaning people who ideally would learn to butt out and accept that there is probably stuff they're not aware of, but a lot of people don't and they try to shut down conflict there and good for you for not being cowed. Uh, you made a different choice. I did in a similar situation where I didn't want there to be a fight at the funeral. Uh, and it was specifically because, you know, my father-in-law he made it very clear throughout his years that he didn't want fighting. He he just wanted there to be peace. And so because that was so specifically important to him, I, I made the choice I did 
but you know, I, I feel for you and I've, I've been in those situations where no, we're having this fight and yeah, I screamed. And as you know, as long as you don't regret what you said, as long as you feel like what you said was fair, I totally support you in not regretting it at all. Good for you. Good for you. Sometimes, sometimes you just have to do it. And it was a screaming match. So both sides were giving. It wasn't just one person screaming at the other person uninterrupted, which happens a lot more often than is healthy. So that's it for this week. More next week. It's going to be, I think it's going to be a good content week next week. I'm, I'm excited personally. I have to go back to the rheumatologist next week too. So we're not thinking about that. We're thinking about the exciting content week. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone you can use if you can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Or the Discord that you can give a one-time donation directly to our Discord stuff. Patreon's the other way you can do that. Um, but uh, thanks for watching. And I don't have the Feedback Friday graphic. There we go. Have a great weekend. <laughs>